after the escape from Pharaoh, the Israelites are in the Sinai Desert, and Moses ascends Mount Sinai to receive the words of the Lord. And here we have Moses descending from Mount Sinai with the two tablets, with the Ten Commandments written by God on them, and he's about to smash them because he sees that the Israelites are worshiping the golden calf. And what is written on the tablets are the Ten Commandments. And what is so important about the Ten Commandments is that they build upon the seven Noahite commandments, but in addition, we are told that I am the God that brought you out of Egypt, out of slavery. You will have no other gods before me, and you will keep the Sabbath. And here are the earliest Ten Commandments that we have. On the left is the Ten Commandments from the Dead Sea Scrolls. On the right is the Ten Commandments from the Codex Vaticanus, which is the oldest Hebrew Bible because it incorporates the Septuagint that was written in Egypt by 70 rabbis before the Dead Sea Scrolls. We're also told in the Bible that Moses, his face was radiant some say sunburned, whatever you might think, but his face was radiant when he came down. In the Vulgate, the Christian Bible, the word radiant becomes horns. And Michelangelo, when he carved his Moses, he put horns on him. And that is why people think Jewish people have horns. Now we are told in Genesis about that we should keep the Sabbath. Remember, it is one of the three additional commandments of the Ten Commandments. And lo and behold, the first extra-biblical mention of the Sabbath was also found on a piece of clay called an ostraca, written in Elphantine in the year 475, just about the time of Esther. And it's written here, Get there before the boat comes in on account of the Sabbath. Remember, this is the story of ethical monotheism. And we are told that in Exodus that if you take a neighbor's garment, you must return it to him before sunset. There is an ostrica. There is a man, Hoshayahu, who is writing to the governor saying, and he, Shobi, he seized the garment of your servant, but he didn't return it. In roughly the time, same time period, written about the year 650, and Isaiah writes about the amulets that people are wearing. An amulet was discovered outside the walls of Jerusalem with the oldest biblical scripture. May Yahweh bless you, and may he keep you. May Yahweh make his face, his countenance, to shine upon you. This is amazing. Not one, but two. They're on display at the Israel Museum. The oldest biblical scripture the year 650 B.C. In Numbers 21.9, the Israelites are in Edom, and they are restless, and they are losing belief in Moses. And it is written, Moses made a copper serpent, and mounted on a standard. And when anyone was bitten by a serpent, he would look at the copper serpent and recover. And here we have a copper snake from that area. Several chapters in Numbers deal with Balaam of Beor and Balak, the king of the Moabites, as the Israelites are moving north through the Jordan Valley on their way to the Promised Land. And here we have an inscription from Dear Allah in Jordan that is written, Balaam the son of Beor. 
in Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 4, we are introduced to the core prayer of the Israelites. Hear, O Israel, the Lord is our God, the Lord is one. And in verse 8, we are told to bind them on our hand as a symbol and on our forehead and inscribe them on the doorposts of our houses. And here we have the box that held the prayer that was used to bind to one's hand, found at Qumran from the time of the Dead Sea Scrolls. We also have an example of a place to put that prayer on the doorpost of an entrance to a synagogue that was at the foot of the Temple Mount built around the year 600 Common Era.